It's how to carry out an accurate titration of an unknown solution where you want to find out its concentration. And what we're dealing with here is an unknown solution of sodium hydroxide. Notice it says corrosive, so we've got lab coat and goggles on. First step is to measure out an accurate volume of that. And for that we need a volumetric pipette, one of these devices, and a sucker, that will, a pipette filler that will suck up the liquid into the pipette. You won't be able to see all of this as I do it, but we're measuring out, we're sucking up exactly 25 centimetres cubed of our alkali. And I'm just letting, a, I've gone over the line, so I'm just letting a bit of alkali out. You may not be able to see that, but the alkali is exactly on the line. I don't know if the camera can focus there and see that, but I'm now going to put my carefully, accurately measured volume of alkali into a conical flask. So, I know how much alkali is in there. In my burette, I put some hydrochloric acid. I've done that beforehand, um, but that hydrochloric acid in the burette is what I know the concentration of. And in this instance, the concentration is exactly 0.1 moles per decimeter cubed. Exactly that. Um, and we're going to use that to work out our concentration of alkali. Now, next thing, I need an indicator to tell me whether or not it's neutral. And one, two, three, four, five. Five drops of phenol phthalene gives a bright pink colour in alkali. So my alkali is in there, my acid's in the burette, and at the moment it's bright pink. Now, I'm going to add a bit of acid at a time. Oh, just bear in mind, I've noted already the volume of acid in the burette at the start. Uh, it happens to be 0.0 in this case. I'm going to swirl the liquid round whilst adding a little bit of acid at a time. This is the first time I'm doing the experiment, so I can be fairly rough and ready about it. I don't need to be too careful. I'm just swirling it around quite merrily. Um, I want everything to mix so that I know that all my acid has reacted with all my alkali. I think I'm getting close there now. Yeah, it's nearly gone colourless. One more drop and it goes colourless. Make sure you use the word colourless, not clear. The solution was clear at the start, but it was pink. The solution has gone colourless. Do not say it's gone clear because it was already clear. Now, the amount of acid I've added is about 11.9 centimetres cubed. That's my rough result. I'm not actually going to use that in my calculations, but 11.9 gives me a rough idea of how much acid I need to add to exactly neutralise my alkali. Right, we're now repeating the experiment is exactly the same way that I've done it before, but this time I know roughly how much acid I've got to add, so hopefully I can get a more accurate result. I've washed out my conical flask, that's clean, washed it with distilled water, so it's got no acid or alkali in it. I'm letting 25 centimetres cubed from my volumetric pipette go into my flask. This is the most accurate equipment we have for measuring an exact volume of 25 centimetres cubed. It's much better than a measuring cylinder why we use it. Likewise, the burette is by far the best apparatus for adding our other chemical, in this case hydrochloric acid. Okay, so I've got alkali, acid in the burette. Again, I need to use my indicator, phenolphthalein, one, two, three, four, five. It's not absolutely critical you have the same amount each time, but good idea just for consistency. And I'm going to note the initial reading on the burette, and I know I've got to add about 11.8, so I know roughly how much I'm going to add in total. So I can add the acid quite quickly until I get close to my final result. And then I add a little bit at a time because I know I'm quite clear, quite near to the final result. By the way, 
in case I didn't mention it, the pink tile is there so that I can see even the faintest, sorry, the white tile even, is there so I can see even the faintest colour pink. You might see it's gone fairly faint pink now. One or two drops of acid is all it's going to take. It's ever so slightly pink. You wouldn't be able to see that against the dark background of this clamp stand. One last drop and it's gone completely colourless again. Remember what I said, colourless, not clear. So this time I look at my result, I subtract it from my initial reading and I find I've actually this time added 11.6 centimetres cubed. My rough result was 11.8, my first accurate was 11.6. Okay, what I would do now is repeat it again, exactly the same method as before, and hopefully my final, well my next repeat would be close to 11.6. And if it was close enough, I'd take an average and that would give me a very accurate result for the volume of acid I needed to neutralize my alkali. So we've done our experiment and we've repeated it and we've got a series of results for our titration. And here is a set I've got for the experiment I've just done. I did a rough titration, I got 11.8 centimetres cubed, did a first accurate on 11.6, 12.9, 11.8. And my first job then is to work out the average volume of hydrochloric acid I added. Now this is pretty straightforward. I'm not going to use the rough result because that was rough and ready, I just did it in a hurry. It's not very accurate. The first accurate result was 11.6. My third one was 11.8, but my second one was 12.9. Now that's quite a lot different from the other two, so I'm going to ignore it. That's what you might call an anomalous result. I've made an error, I didn't clean something out properly, I misread the burette, who knows what. So we've got 11.6 and 11.8 as my two reliable, reproducible, accurate results. The average of them is 11.7. Now the question posed, usually a question something like this, was what was the concentration of sodium hydroxide solution in the conical flask? That was the chemical I measured out with a pipette, and I measured out 25 centimetres cubed of it. Well at this stage it's helpful to look at the numbers we've got and what we're actually told in the question. So for example, we're told the reaction involved 25 centimetres cubed of sodium hydroxide. Now that's an alkali, and you might not be able to tell, but that's blue ink, but I've underlined my volume of alkali in blue, just because it seems a suitable colour. Um, my acid, well, hydrochloric acid, I'm told 0.1 moles per decimetre cubed. That's the concentration, and I'm just going to write that next to it. Concentration. In an exam, there's no reason why you shouldn't use a highlighter pen to highlight the information you've been given about the sodium hydroxide and the hydrochloric acid, or whichever acid or alkali it is. So, we also know the hydrochloric acid's volume, 11.7 centimetres cubed. So, we know the volume and the concentration of hydrochloric acid. But the question asks us, what was the concentration of sodium hydroxide? Now, we can't work that out yet. We need to start by applying an important equation. And the equation is this. And it's one you need to learn because it won't be given to you in your chemistry exam. The, question, the equation is moles equals concentration multiplied by volume. And it's important also that you know that the volume is measured in decimeters cubed because the concentration is measured in moles per decimeter cubed. So, if we look at our sodium hydroxide, we know the volume, 25. But it doesn't tell us the concentration, and it doesn't tell us the moles. So we can't work anything out for sodium hydroxide. But with our hydrochloric acid, we are told the concentration, and we measured the volume. So, our first important step is we can work out our moles of hydrochloric acid, HCl. They are the concentration, 0.1 times the volume, 11.7 centimetres cubed. Change that to decimetres cubed. That means you divide by 1,000. And the answer to that is 0.0117. 
So we know our moles of HCl. Now we're going to use the balanced equation to work out the moles of sodium hydroxide. We know that the moles of acid is 0.00117. Here's the balanced equation. It tells us that one mole of sodium hydroxide reacts with one mole of hydrochloric acid. Now, we know this has happened in our reaction. We know that the amount of sodium hydroxide and HCl must be exactly the same because we stopped adding hydrochloric acid at the instant where the indicator changed colour, telling us that all the sodium hydroxide had been neutralised. Sodium chloride and water are neutral. So, this means that there must be the same number of moles of sodium, sodium hydroxide. And if I was writing an exam question, I would actually write out moles of sodium hydroxide equals 0.00117. It doesn't take you long to do that, and it shows the examiner you know what you're doing. The final step, that's basically step two, the final step of your calculation is now what did they ask you to find in the first place? If I show you the original question, it was what was the concentration of the sodium hydroxide? We need to use the equation again, moles, concentration and volume, but this time, because we're working out concentration, we rearrange it. So we say concentration of NaOH equals moles divided by volume, which is 0.00117 divided by the volume of sodium hydroxide. Go back to the original question, there it is, 25 centimetres cubed of sodium hydroxide. So, 25 centimetres cubed is 0.025 decimetres cubed. Don't forget to divide centimetres cubed by 1,000 to get decimetres cubed. And then you put that number into your calculator and you will get 0.0468 moles per decimetre cubed. And that's the calculation then. There are three steps. Just to recap, step one, you work out the moles of whichever solution you know both concentration and volume of. In this example, it was HCl. Step two, you use the balanced equation to tell you that the moles of the other chemical must be exactly the same because one reacts with one. And then step three, you make use of the moles to work out something about the sodium hydroxide. In this example, you are asked the concentration of sodium hydroxide. You could have been asked the mass in grams of sodium hydroxide, but that's a different calculation. Now, all titration calculations follow this pattern, um, but there is a slight change if, for example, you have a different acid. Imagine you're using sulfuric acid. Now, sulfuric acid is H2SO4. So imagine we've done exactly the same experiment as before, but our sulfuric acid was what was in the burette rather than the hydrochloric. So if we got our uh, titration value of 11.7 centimetres cubed again, and our concentration was 0.1, the moles of H2SO4 would be the same. It would still be 11.7 uh, over 1,000 times 0.1, which is 0.00117 moles. So that step one would be exactly the same as before. Step two, however, is different because each mole of sulfuric acid can neutralize two moles of sodium hydroxide. So step two, from our balanced equation, moles of NaOH is two times 0.00117, which is 0.00 two, three, four. So then, when we work out our concentration of NaOH, we have twice as many moles, 0.00234. The volume, let's say there was 25 centimetres cubed still, 25 over 1,000, which of course is 0.025. You put that into your calculator and you'll get 0.0936 moles per decimeter cubed. So the only difference was the fact that we're using an acid that has twice as many H plus ions in it, so it reacts with twice as many 
moles of sodium hydroxide.